Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now I must be in a compact SUV mode at the moment because very recently I drove the new Audi Q3. And then thanks to the guys at Jeep UK, I've spent the last week with this, the 2019 Jeep Compass. And I wondered whether it's any good or not. Now, let me let you into a little secret. In the early noughties, I got my first proper performance car. I got a Mark I Audi TT Roadster, the 225 variant, and I just love that car to pieces. But at the same time, we also had a horse, and it got to the point where <laughs> we needed to trade in the Audi for something that was able to tow a horse box. So the search for an SUV began, and a friend of ours had the Mark I uh, Jeep Cherokee, the square boxy one. And it was always quite impressive and I, I drove it a few times. And then the, the new replacement to that came out and we seriously considered that. And I've always had a bit of a thing for the styling of a Jeep, I guess harking back to the Willis Jeep of the, you know, the war era. Um, and it was a really impressive car. We drove it on road and off road. We towed with it. And the deal breaker for us was the boot space on the car was just not, not really big enough. We had a bigger dog at the time. And we looked at the Grand Cherokee, but I wasn't really convinced with the styling and didn't really like the car. <laughs> In the end, we ended up with a short wheelbase Mitsubishi Shogun. And I absolutely love that car. I put 100,000 miles on a car, brilliant thing. But I've always had this soft spot for a Jeep. And, and I think that really starts with the kind of front profile of the car. And this new Compass has it. It's got that iconic Jeep grill. From the front, you, you can't fail to realize that this is part of the Jeep family. But what I'm really interested in, the reason I asked Jeep uh, UK for this car, is having driven the Q3 recently in this kind of compact SUV segment, so interesting, so um, there's so much competition, so many quite good cars in there. I wanted to see whether where this fitted because arguably of all of those cars in that segment, the E-Pace, the XC40 from Volvo, the Tiguan, um, you know, the, the off-road capability, bearing in mind it's an SUV, for most of those cars isn't really that great. But Jeep reckon this is. You know, the underpinnings of this car, the suspension travel, the capability, the four-wheel drive system in this car suggest that it should be pretty good off-road. And I know most owners of a car like this, the nearest to off-road is probably going to be the grass car park for kiddies football on a Saturday morning. But I really want to put this car through its paces. So first thing I'm going to do, we'll have a kind of look around the outside at the styling. I quite like some of the styling, the front grille I love but there are other elements of the styling that I'm not really that comfortable with. We'll have a think about the inside. Inside again, there's things I love and things I'm not so keen on, and then we'll take it out for a drive. Now, we're gonna do some driving on the road, but tomorrow morning, my plan is to take this puppy off-road. Let's have a think about the external styling, and we're gonna start with a side profile round this side. So overall from the side, I think, I think this car looks really nice. This particular spec with the kind of blue bodywork and the black roof, black roof rails looks really smart. What I do like about it is it's got that kind of higher uh, ride height and, and a higher wheel arch gap that kind of makes you think, yeah, this car's got some off-road pedigree. Things I'm not too keen on, now maybe this is just my OCD here, but this wheel, doesn't sit in the middle of this wheel arch. There's a bigger gap here than there is here. What's that about? Maybe it's to do with the suspension travel, I don't know, but it just doesn't look right to me. Overall, the smoother lines from the side profile, it's got a reasonably nice ride height. It's not too big, um, but yeah, it's okay. These wheels are, are okay as well. They're a bit kind of, a bit chromey for me, um, but yeah, it's just that, that wheel not being in the middle of the um, wheel arch really kind of just gets my right eye twitching. Let's have a look round the back, shall we? And then the back, for me, 
there's nothing wrong with the back. I think it's I quite like the sort of sleek lines, this kind of tie up between um, the body color and the roof liner with the privacy glass. As I said, that, that look is quite cool. I just, I, there's just something missing for me and I, I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, overall, I think the, the packaging of the car, the, the, it's kind of got that, that edgy look. Maybe it's just a bit too smooth. It needs that ruggedness for me a little bit more than that but it's very, very cold out here. So I reckon we jump inside and, and have a think about the interior of this car before we take it for a drive. Come on, let's jump inside. Oh, that's better. It really is very cold out there. Now, first thing to say about this interior, this particular car has been specced with quite a premium feel and there is white leather seats and white leather door liners. Now, from a practicality point of view, that probably wouldn't be my choice. And actually, if you look at this press car, now bearing on my press cars get a real hammering, there are marks on the seats and on the door liners already. And I think if you had a family and you were really gonna use this car, um, uh, you know, you'd probably wanna make sure that you got a darker interior. But overall, the interior is pretty nice. You've got a nice leather bound steering wheel, um, and the material choice is pretty good. There's kind of like a reasonable plastics on the dash. Um, as I said, leather on the door liners. So it does have a nice feel in here. Um, the driving position is really nice. There's good adjustment on the steering wheel. And then the sat nav and MMI system, if I just turn the car on, um, is a really usable system. Uh, it may well be a little bit fiddly. Everything's on here. It's all touch screen. The touch works really nicely. And then the other controls are all nice and clean and plain. Um, all in all though, comfort wise is great. There are loads of cubby holes, storage bins, drinks and cup holders, uh, USB charge ports, all the things that you would want from a kind of modern day car, especially a family oriented modern day car. Uh, but I really like it. One of the interesting things that we've got the uh, automatic gearbox option, option car uh, on test this week. One of the really interesting things is there's a button just there or a little rotatory dial that basically has all of my four wheel drive drive modes. Now, the car pref basically is set up as a preference with front wheel drive for fuel economy. So in vast majority of cases, when you're driving this car, it's gonna be front wheel drive. But if the car senses that grip is failing, it can start to put some of the uh, drive to the rear wheels and it becomes four wheel drive. But I do have a proper four wheel drive system in here with snow, sand and mud modes and a four wheel drive lock. So if it all goes really, really nasty and you get stuck, you basically push that button and it locks all four wheels and you've then got a four wheel drive car and that's what we're going to kind of put into test tomorrow hopefully. So let's just jump in the back from a, um, a kind of practicality and space point of view because actually there seems to be quite a lot of room in the back. Come on, let's go and be a rear seat passenger. Oh, long legged person test again. Now, often when I do these, I often get comments, how tall are you? Well, I am six foot three high, but my inside leg is the real thing. This is 34 inch inside legs. We've got very long legs. But I must say, actually, from a space point of view, I've got, I mean, my seat's quite a long way back. I've, my, my knees are just rubbing on the seat, but it's not uncomfortable. I've got plenty of headroom. Actually, this is a pretty nice place to be. These rear seats are quite firm. But I've got, you know, I've got some heating vents there. I've got a USB charge port. Uh, and actually I've got a 230 volt charge port there. So I can have a, I don't know, me laptop plugged in here or games console. You could certainly get two adults in here, three little people, I would guess. But yeah, very impressive. Now, now for the first proper test starring the petrol pup. Can you get a dog in the boot? Let's go and find out. So, can you get a dog in the back? Well, actually, for the first time, I'm able to test whether you can get two dogs in the back because, yeah, making her debut on a car review, here is the petrol pup and the petrol pooch. What do you reckon, guys? You fit in the back okay? Yeah, well, 
that's a successful test. Now then, it is very cold today. I have minimal amount of time today because I'm still puppy sitting this one. But tomorrow morning, we're gonna take this car out on the road, put it through its paces on the road, and then the plan is, you shaking? The plan is we're gonna try and get it off road. So I'm gonna take these two inside to get warm and I'll see you in the morning because we actually might have a little bit of snow forecast tomorrow, which would make things really cool. But I'll see you in the morning. Come on guys, say goodbye to the masses. Yay! <laughs> Good morning, people. It's a cold one. I'm gonna get that straight away, get this car on because it's really cold outside. It is minus one. We have frost on the windows. The first thing I need to do, oh, possible ice on road. Thank you for letting me know that, Mr. Jeep. That's lovely. The first thing I'm gonna do is get these heated seats and heated steering wheel on and defrost the front window. Then we're going to go and drive the car and then we're going to go and play with a bit of off-road. We have a beautiful day today, so hopefully some dramatic shots. We're going to mount the trundle. So we didn't get any snow overnight, although we might have some snow forecast for tomorrow, I believe. Now, the very first thing that I noticed when I got to drive this car is I got in it and I drove up the road and thought, this car is has no go whatsoever. It felt really sluggish. It didn't feel up for it at all. And I thought instantly, I don't like it. And then after a little while, I realized that that was all down to the spring on the throttle. The, the, the throttle travel I reckon it probably moves about half an inch, maybe as much as an inch, before it really does anything. You can actually drive along and move your foot up and down on the throttle and nothing really happens. So that initial travel kind of just makes the car feel really dead. But if you go beyond that, actually, it's got quite a lot of go. And it's just, you've just got to get used to the, the throttle waiting. And then actually you've got quite a sprightly little car, but on the kind of short runs I've been doing, um, actually once you get over that, that, that throttle travel, it's a really nice little car to drive. It, it's certainly got some go. Now what I really like about this class of car, this kind of compact SUV, is the elevated driving position. I always liked that when I had my 4x4s in the past. We started off a kind of Shogun and Freelander at one height, which is I guess very similar to this, and then clearly you kind of take it to the next level with something like a, a Discovery or a Porsche Cayenne or a Range Rover. But you just have that slightly elevated driving position. And then the other thing I think that, that feels really nice in this is it has a really nice premium feel. You've just got this really nice thick weighty steering wheel with leather binding, quite a nice view over the dials. You've got very comfy seats, leather bound, leather clad doors. It's just a really nice kind of looking cabin. You're certainly not gonna buy this car if you want performance, um, if you want that out and out sportiness. It's just, that, that's just not the kind of person who would buy this car. So I'll recalibrate my, my expectation from a performance point of view. But on the whole, the, the road holding and the, the kind of general feel of the car is nice, it, it, you know, it, it, it's okay. Um, is it a car that, you know, ultimately the kind of car I would buy? Probably not from a lacking in performance point of view, but everything else I, I quite like. Now I'm driving this kind of MMI system actually is relatively easy to use. You've got a basic menu navigation buttons along the bottom and that takes you into the various menus and it's quite easy to change stuff. But as we mount the top of the trundle, I think we've just driven up it on a nice tarmac road, one of my favorite roads actually, but just the other side of this hill is a lane and it's a public uh, byway that I'm able to drive this car up. And it's uh, very untarmacked. In fact, at places it's very rutty. So I think we come up the trundle from the other side off road. So here we go guys, at the bottom of the trundle, this is Chalk Pit Lane. Now it might not look very much right now, but very shortly the gradient increases and the quality of the road surface decreases and there's a huge rutted section. So we're gonna see how we get on. 
um, and hopefully we'll get all the way to the top. Now I've cycled up here on my mountain bike a million times, but I've never ever been brave enough to drive a car up here, so <laughs> this should be quite fun. So this bit really, you know, a, a normal saloon car with reasonable ground clearance would go up here. And I know anybody who does proper, proper mud plugging off-roading is gonna look at this video and go, it's not off-road. It's as best as I can do. And also I don't want to hand this press car back to Jeep in pieces, because that would be very uncool. Um, but I think, you know, it would have been nicer had it not been frozen overnight, because it would have been a bit more skiddy and muddy. It's all kind of pretty much frozen, but it's, it's, it's pretty bumpy. We've got good ground clearance. We've got nice suspension travel. It's bouncing me around all over the place. This is green laning, people. So up till now, it's not too bad because just to the right there is the Goodwood Shooting School. So there's some reasonable amount of cars come up and down here. But it, from this point on, it gets a little bit more leery. So whether or not I need it, I'm just going to stick four wheel drive lock on um, and kind of just Hope I don't rip any of the. I'll tell you what, it's fairly. Uh, it's, you know. Oh, hello. I'm kind of driving through the through it to make it as bad as possible. The front wheels off the road there. Hey, not bad. We have made it up to the top of the trundle and that, I have to say, I mean, Max, you haven't seen him, he was off camera, he's been helping with the filming. We're both sat here mega impressed at this thing. I know you can have more severe off-roading than that, but that's impressive stuff. There were some really deep ruts and yeah, <laughs> very, very cool. So let's park up, admire the view and bring this video to a close. So we have made it to the top of the trundle and that is the view that you are rewarded with. Absolutely stunning. You kind of pretty much got the, you can just about make out the motor circuit there, Rolls-Royce factory to the left. If you pan round to the right, you can see probably Chichester Cathedral and all the way over there in the far distance is the Isle of Wight. It is a beautiful view up here. And that, that Jeep Compass just performed admirably. Absolutely brilliant thing. Great on-road and actually really really good off-road so i'm going to draw that video to a close massively impressed with the jeep compass anyway i hope you've enjoyed that video if you have done so please give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to petrol Pet for plenty more content to come and i will see you on the next film i cannot promise that we will necessarily be as radical off-road or have as much drone footage but hey you never know i'll see you on that one you take care drive safe